Do you need to be a developer to build apps? Let's discover Toolchat, a free open source low-code platform to create custom internal tools quickly and easily. First, it has an easy-to-use visual builder, where you can drag and drop blocks to compose the different pages of your apps. Then, you can create databases to make your application dynamic, and easily connect it with the button and interface of your app. To feed your database, you have 48 ready-to-use data sources, from classic Postgre database and Google spreadsheets to Stripe and Slack integrations. And for any more custom things, you can always connect your own API. Before diving into the platform overview, let's see the different options available to start using it. You can use the free cloud version, up to 5 tables and 10,000 rows. You can also self-deploy it with Docker by following the instructions on their GitHub repository. Or use a platform like ours, Elestio, to take care of the installation on the cloud provider of your choice, backups, updates and maintenance for you. To easily install Toolchat on our platform, go to ls.io and click on Login. Deploy my first service, search for Toolchat, and then click on Select. Choose your cloud provider, region and service plan based on your need, then click on Next. Adjust your level of support, I will keep the free included one, and once you're ready, click on Create Service. When the installation is finished, you receive an email telling you that your instance is ready. Follow the click here to get the password link. You arrive on your LSTO administration dashboard. Click here to copy the password to your clipboard and follow the admin UI link of your Toolchat instance. You arrive on your fresh instance of Toolchat, write your email address and paste the password from your clipboard, then log in. You arrive on the dashboard, we don't have any application created yet, but before doing it, the most important, deciding if we use the light or dark mode. I will keep the light mode. We have the choice between creating a new application from scratch or browsing through the different templates. We would choose to use a template. They are sorted between different categories, and for each template, you have information about what feature it is using from Toolchat. For example, this admin panel right here is to administrate a Toolchat database, and it's using Toolchat database and some custom JavaScript code. Inside developer utilities, you also have AWS S3 Explorer, and the integration it is using is AWS S3. You also have color palette generator that is only using JavaScript, so I think it will be a good starting point to dive into the interface of Toolchat. Let's create our application. As it is an example, we can keep that name and then create app. Because this is our first application from our account or our instance, it is triggering us the onboarding tour. So you can see drag and drop component. So here it is all the different blocks we can drag and drop. We have the inspector, we'll go through it later. So we don't have to remember everything right now. You can create queries. This is a very important aspect of Toolchat. Then the standard preview and share. So you can preview, develop, and then once you are ready, you will release your app. And finally, you can collaborate with your team members using comments. Perfect. Let's click on done and see the template that we are currently using. So we won't edit it for now. We just click the preview button. This template is pretty simple. What it does is it takes an input here. It's an hexadecimal color code. And when you click on generate color palette, it generates different variation of that same color. So let's say, for example, we change the current color with 5555 and blue with FF, generate, and it will generate that color. So here it's from dark to light, and then it creates variation using more red, more green, or more blue. You have different actions connected to this template, so custom text. If you write something like submit, you can preview your button with the current text or you can choose to show the loading state. And you can also set some canvas background color. Let's say 555555, set canvas background color. Let me change the color here. So this is not using a database. It's just to show you connection between elements and rendering items. Now we understand better that project, we can look at our interface in Toolchat and see how they created this. For example, here we have that button with that input, so set canvas background color. If we click on it, configure, we can edit the text content of the button here, and it contains two events. So on click, it will show an alert only if that regular expression here is matched, 
So it will trigger the alert if it is false, which means the verification for that input is incorrect. Then it will say, please enter a valid hex color code. And we have a second one. It is when the regular expression is match, when it is true, then what it will do it will set the color of the canvas using that background color here. But the most interesting element here is the generate color palette. So what it does is it runs a query. So the query it runs is generate color code. So this is a query. We have our queries here on the bottom panel. We can resize it to have a better overview of what it does. And this is custom JavaScript code. So what it takes is a base color and based on it, it will generate new colors. We won't dive into the JavaScript code. It's not the purpose of this video. But what we can do is to preview the output of it. So it returns an array with five items. And for each item, it's returning new colors. So those colors, they are the colors that we see here. So we have five rows here. And for each row, we have all the different colors. And the component used to render it is here, a list view. And you have some settings to make it customized. So you can see it's using the data from generate color code. It is in a list mode and you can choose the height row. So for example, we can make it smaller and we will have less space between the different rows. You can enable pagination, add events and do a lot more things. To dive deeper into the interface, let's see another more interesting example. So let's go back to our apps here, back to apps. So we can create an app, but it will create it from scratch. We still want to use a template. So choose from a template. And what we will want to do is to go into operations and you have again, different templates. And the one that will interest us is simple marketplace. So it is a marketplace of products. Let's create application from this template keep the default name and create app. Why this template is more interesting is because it is really using a database under the hood. So when we will add product, they will be stored inside Toolget database. So again, let's preview our template and it's a ready to use template. So we can start using it and it will really add item to our database. So we do manage your listings. Currently we don't have products, so we need to add a product. So click on list a product. And here you have a model with different fields to create our product. I've prepared those images we can use for our product. Let's name it pink marker, a beautiful pink marker. You already have categories, but you can edit them in the database. We'll see it later. So let's say it's a tool. The price is $3. You can add a contact number, contact email, but we don't need it. So we can save our product. And you can see it is a request that has been submitted. It doesn't add it directly. We'll see later how to approve products. First, let's add a second one. Another image. Let's name it cactus, beautiful plant. The category, let's say it's wellness. The price 20. And again, we can save our product. Now let's go back to the page builder and currently we don't see our product. So why is that? So we can expand the queries here and we have get products. And to see a product, it needs to have its status equals to approved and a lot of other features that are used to do some features here. But the one that interests us in that case is the status approved. So let's go to our database to access it again, the rocket, the logo and database. We have currently two tables, marketplace favorite and marketplace product. Here we can see the two products that we created with that nice table view. It automatically has a filter and sort. We can select different one, delete, edit, and so on. Let's expand one. So it opened the edition. And we know that it is the status that must be to approved. And when it's created, it's automatically to pending. So we need to set a custom value approved and save changes. Then we do the same on the pink marker. Status approved, save changes. And you can see here, if I expand it again, you have some additional information about listed by who you can see my email address. You have automatically a created ad and updated ad date that are set when you interact with your data. 
Now let's go back to the builder and see if we can see our product. So we can go back to our apps, simple marketplace, edit, and back to our application, we can see them. So let's do preview again. And what I want to show you is that if we use the search bar, for example, if I tap pink, we can only see the pink marker. If I tap CA, we have only the cactus. Everything is ready to use here. So for example, I think I put the cactus in wellness, apply filter. I only see it if I set a maximum price to $10, it will be above. So we don't have any product that much. We can reset the filters and we see all the products again. And if we look back at the editor, how it works, it's a very low code platform. You just have inputs that you set and connect the different data to connect the different input to impact your data logic here. To see how they created it, the best example is to try to create our own. So let's open on the left the pages. Here we can add a new page. Let's name it frequently asked question. Currently it's empty and we can add different type of blocks. So commonly used table, buttons, form, input, text and so on. Layout so you can create responsive interface and you can see the choice is vast with a large number of different block components. So let's add a table. We place it randomly, it's not so important. It has some fake data for the moment, but first let's add a title here. So it's automatically hello and my name. So what I will do is frequently asked questions. It's not big enough, so we can adjust it. And on the right, we can connect data at events, but on the style section, we can fine tune our title. So let's make it bigger, for example, 22. I want to make it a bit bolder, so weight bold. And we have our title. See how easy it is to create an interface. But instead of using those current data, those sample data, so it's hard coded here, we'll get rid of it and we will create a table to handle it. So let's go back to the database, here database. And because the tables are shared between all the different projects, it's good to keep a name convention. So let's name it also marketplace underscore FAQ. And we will need two columns, at least two columns. So question, you have the choice between all the classical database type, so varchar, and the answer with the same type. We don't need relation, but you can see that you can create a more intelligent one. Click on create and let's add our two question. So add new row and let's type our question. When do I receive my order within three to five business days? Create, let's add another one. Can I get a refund? You have 30 days to claim a refund. No questions asked and create. Now our data is set correctly. We can go back to the application. So we want to create a query to be able to have access to our FAQ data. So let's expand on the bottom the query. So we have get products and so on. And we will need to do a two jet database. So it's a no code to create database request. Name it get FAQ. The table we target is FAQ. The operation is to list all the rows we have. We don't need condition, but you can see how easy you can choose between columns and value to create some sort of logic. One option that interests us is to run this query on application load. So we'll have the data directly available. We can run preview. And here we are, we have an array with two items. The first question, when do I receive my order? And the second item, can I get a refund? Perfect. So now we can get rid of it and edit our table to connect our data. So at the moment, I don't know the exact syntax to get access to my data. So if I click here, do they show me how? I don't think so. Let's look at the other component that are using it. Let's go back to the home page. Here it is using the product, so we can copy it, get products the data and we'll be using the same. So let's go back to the FAQ data and it's not the products we want. 
but get FAQ. And now we have our data displayed on the left. So currently we have the ID shown, we have the possibility to select, so we can edit it. So we can remove the ID, it's not removing it from the database, but from the display. So now they just see the question and the answer. We don't want them to edit, so we keep it like this. We don't want to allow them to select, so we disable it. But automatically we have a search bar, pagination if we have more records, and some filters, which is excellent. Currently, we don't have an access to our FAQ page, so let's go back to the home. And we'll add it at a random place, maybe here on this bar. We can add a button, so drag and drop it. We have our button. Let's size it like the others the text FAQ and we need to add an event so it will lead us to the other page. So new event handler, by default it's a on click, it's what we need. The action is switch page. We don't have condition, when we click we want to switch the page and the page we want to open is frequently asked question. Perfect, so let's try to see if it works. So right now we have our page, we have the FAQ button, let's click on it and it opens automatically our frequently asked question page. I think I forgot to show you something here, it's the inspector. So here you have a global overview of your project. You have the list of all the queries, the different components that compose your page. You should rename them to have a clear understanding of what it is. But let's focus on the queries. So we had a get FAQ. And here what we could do is copy path to clipboard and on the FAQ on our table we could use the path. So if I paste it we had get FAQ and we just had to write dot data. Another interesting thing is the collaboration is made easy because here I opened it in two tab. You can see on the left it's moving the mouse cursor on the right and if I do the opposite you can see the other user that is moving around. This, in addition to the different comments that you can create on the interface, make it very easy to collaborate in team. We have seen the database, but how do we feed our database? It's by using data sources. There are tons of ready-to-use integration from commonly used PostgreSQL, Google Sheets, Airtable, MongoDB, to more application one with APIs, for example Stripe, Slack, Twilio, and if you need some custom one, you can always connect your REST API. The process is made easy, for example, add. You enter the URL, you have different options to set, but you have the documentation to help you do it. And you have that nice guide here to help you achieve it. Finally, in the settings of Toolchat, go to Workspace Settings. You can invite different users and attach them to different groups. So the good thing about groups is that you can create fine-tuned permission. So if I go, for example, to admins, you can choose the permission based on the resources. So on apps, what can they do? On folder, what they can do and so on. But you can also do fine-tuned control on which app you want to give view and edit access. Thank you for watching, we hope you enjoyed discovering Toolchat with us. If you find our content useful, please hit the like button to help other open source lovers discover this video. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next platform overviews. To continue your open source journey, I recommend you watch this video here.